When scientists first began exploring the genetic origins of Ashkenazi Jews in the 1990s, they opened a window into one of history's most remarkable migration stories. Using three main types of DNA analysis, autosomal DNA that captures your entire ancestry, Y-chromosomal DNA that traces the male line, and mitochondrial DNA that follows the maternal line, researchers have pieced together a compelling narrative that spans thousands of years. What they discovered challenges many assumptions and reveals a population with a truly unique genetic signature. Ashkenazi Jews display what scientists call the homogeneity of a genetic bottleneck. Imagine a large, diverse population that was dramatically reduced to just a few hundred families, then slowly rebuilt over centuries. This bottleneck appears to have occurred around the time of the First Temple's destruction, roughly 2,500 years ago, when a thriving population of several million was reduced to perhaps just 400 families, who eventually made their way from northern Italy to central and eastern Europe around the year 1000. The male lineage tells a particularly clear story. Multiple studies consistently show that Ashkenazi Jewish men carry Y-chromosome markers that are unmistakably Middle Eastern in origin. These genetic signatures are shared with other Jewish populations and Middle Eastern peoples, but are remarkably uncommon among indigenous Europeans. The genetic evidence suggests that over 80 generations, there was minimal mixing with European populations, less than half a percent per generation. This preservation of Middle Eastern paternal lineages is one of the most striking findings in the research. The maternal story, however, has sparked more debate among scientists. Early studies suggested that about 40% of today's Ashkenazi Jews descend from just four founding women who likely came from the Middle East in the first and second centuries. But a controversial study argued that most Ashkenazi maternal lineages actually came from European women who converted to Judaism, particularly in Italy and France. This study suggested that over 80% of Ashkenazi maternal ancestry was European, painting a picture of Middle Eastern men marrying local European women as Jewish communities formed. Yet this interpretation has faced significant pushback. A groundbreaking 2025 study introduced new methods to distinguish between original founder lineages and those absorbed from outside populations. The researchers found that fewer than 15% of present-day Ashkenazi Jews carry absorbed DNA from outside populations, and these absorbed lineages typically appeared as rare, isolated cases. This newer evidence strongly supports the idea that both maternal and paternal lineages originated in the Near East, contradicting the mixed origin theory. When scientists examine the entire genome, rather than just specific lineages, the picture becomes even more intriguing. Ashkenazi Jews consistently cluster with southern European populations rather than northern ones, reflecting their Mediterranean origins. They share remarkable genetic similarities with modern Italians, Greeks, and other southern European groups while showing clear genetic distance from Central and Eastern European populations despite having lived there for centuries. Perhaps most fascinating is how closely related Ashkenazi Jews are to each other. Any two Ashkenazi Jewish individuals share about as much DNA as fourth or fifth cousins, reflecting their descent from that small founding population. Yet they also maintain strong genetic connections to other Jewish populations worldwide, sharing large segments of DNA that are 10 times more likely to be identical among Jews than among non-Jews. The research has also definitively debunked the once popular Khazar hypothesis, which suggested that Ashkenazi Jews descended from converted Turkic peoples from the Caucasus region. A massive study involving 30 geneticists from multiple countries found no evidence whatsoever of Khazar ancestry among Ashkenazi Jews. Instead, the genetic evidence consistently points to origins in the Middle East and Mediterranean regions. Modern estimates suggest that Ashkenazi Jews carry a mixture of Middle Eastern and European ancestry, with the European component making up roughly 50 to 70% of their genetic makeup and being primarily of Southern European origin. The remaining 30 to 50% shows the strongest affinity to Levantine populations like the Druze and Lebanese. This genetic profile reflects a complex history of migration, settlement, and limited mixing with local populations over more than two millennia. What emerges from this genetic detective work is the story of a people who maintained remarkable genetic continuity despite diaspora, persecution, and geographic dispersion. The DNA of Ashkenazi Jews serves as a biological record of one of history's most extraordinary stories of survival and continuity. However, long before scientists could peer into DNA strands, 
the story of the Jewish people began with a profound spiritual calling that would echo through millennia. One can only imagine Abraham, around 1800 BC, hearing a divine voice telling him to leave everything familiar and journey to an unknown land. This wasn't just a migration, it was the birth of a covenant that would bind his descendants to both faith and destiny. The promise was extraordinary, his offspring would become a great nation, inherit a specific land, and somehow bless all the families of the earth through their existence. This spiritual foundation created something unprecedented in the ancient world, a people defined not by geography or ethnicity alone, but by their relationship with a single ethical god. While their neighbours worshipped multiple deities through elaborate rituals, the early Hebrews embraced monotheism, believing in a god who demanded justice, mercy and moral behaviour. This wasn't just a religious preference, it was a revolutionary worldview that would shape every aspect of their identity. The story deepened with the exodus from Egypt, where Moses led the enslaved descendants of Abraham through miraculous plagues and across a parted sea. But the real transformation happened during their 40-year wilderness journey, when they received the Torah at Mount Sinai. These weren't just commandments, they were the blueprint for a society built on divine law, encompassing everything from ethical behaviour to dietary restrictions to social justice. The Torah became their portable homeland, travelling with them wherever they went. When the Romans destroyed the Second Temple in 70 AD, it marked the beginning of what would become one of history's most remarkable diaspora stories. Over a million Jews died, tens of thousands were enslaved, and survivors scattered across the known world. Yet rather than disappearing into history, they carried their faith and traditions with them, creating a network of communities that would preserve their identity for nearly two millennia. The journey northward into Europe was gradual and often perilous. By the 8th and 9th centuries, Jewish traders were following Carolingian trade routes into the Rhineland, invited by rulers who valued their commercial skills. These early settlers, often arriving from Italy or Byzantium, established communities in cities like Mainz, Worms and Speyer. Here something remarkable happened. They began developing their own distinct culture while maintaining their core religious identity. This is where the Ashkenazi story truly begins to diverge from their Sephardic cousins. While Sephardic Jews in Spain and Portugal were creating a golden age, the Ashkenazi Jews in Northern Europe were developing their own unique traditions. They created Yiddish, a fascinating linguistic fusion of High German, Hebrew and Aramaic that became the voice of their daily life, while Hebrew remained the language of prayer and study. The differences between Ashkenazi and Sephardic traditions became even more pronounced over time, creating two distinct branches of Judaism that fascinate scholars today. Sephardic Jews, named after the Hebrew word for Spain, developed a culture of philosophical inquiry and scientific advancement. They produced luminaries like Maimonides, who synthesized Jewish law with Aristotelian philosophy and created a tradition of elegant Hebrew poetry and sophisticated biblical commentary. Their synagogue services featured different melodies, their pronunciation of Hebrew differed, and even their religious customs took on distinct characteristics. Meanwhile, Ashkenazi Jews, facing the harsher realities of medieval Christian Europe, developed a culture of intense Talmudic study and religious devotion. They created their own body of religious law, led by scholars like Rashi, whose commentaries on the Torah and Talmud remain foundational today. Their approach to Jewish law was often more stringent, their community structures more tightly knit, and their traditions more focused on preservation amid persecution. When we look at the genetic differences between Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews, through the lenses of mitochondrial DNA, Y-chromosome data, and general haplogroup patterns, we find a fascinating story of shared origins, migration, and unique population histories. Starting with mtDNA, which is inherited strictly from the mother, both Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews show lineages that point back to the Middle East. Yet the Ashkenazi population, in particular, presents a pattern of reduced diversity. A few mtDNA lineages are much more common among Ashkenazi Jews than in Sephardic, or even surrounding non-Jewish populations, which hints at a strong founder effect, meaning the group descended from a small number of maternal ancestors. For instance, haplogroups like K1, K2, and N1B1 are particularly overrepresented among the Ashkenazi whereas Sephardic Jews show more diversity and a wider variety of mtDNA haplogroups, including those with connections to the Iberian Peninsula and North Africa. Additionally, certain rare mtDNA motifs turn up almost exclusively among Ashkenazi Jews, while Sephardic Jews display a broader range, sometimes reflecting their histories in North Africa, 
Iberia, or the broader Mediterranean. When it comes to the Y chromosome, which traces paternal lineages, the similarities remain strong, but there are also some notable distinctions. Both Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews carry significant proportions of Y chromosome haplogroups, originating from the Middle East, particularly types like E1b, 1b, J1, and J2. Interestingly, studies show that Ashkenazi Jews also have a higher frequency of certain European haplogroups, such as RM17, compared to Sephardic Jews and other Middle Eastern groups. This might be linked to very low levels of gene flow from European populations or specific historical events. For example, the presence of RM17 has sometimes been interpreted as a potential genetic remnant of conversion events or the integration of local men into the community perhaps most famously discussed in relation to the mysterious Khazar hypothesis, which we discussed earlier, although this represents a small portion of the Ashkenazi gene pool. Going back to the groundbreaking new study in 2025, which we discussed in brief earlier, the cemetery layout at Erfurt Archaeological Site reveals fascinating insights into medieval Jewish burial practices and social organization. The spatial distribution of genetically related individuals shows distinct patterns with family members often buried in close proximity to each other. Yet the two genetic subgroups showed no spatial segregation within the cemetery. This suggests that despite their different genetic ancestries, these groups were fully integrated socially and religiously, sharing the same burial ground without apparent discrimination or separation based on their origins. The radiocarbon dating results present intriguing chronological puzzles that illuminate the complex history of medieval Erfurt. The dating spans a period that encompasses both the first Jewish community and the second community, but the calibration curve makes precise determination difficult. Some individuals appear to predate the 1349 massacre, while others clearly belong to the later period, suggesting either that the cemetery was used continuously or that there was overlap between the two community periods that historical records don't capture. The stable isotope analysis reveals migration patterns that extend beyond simple east-west movements. The oxygen isotope signatures in tooth enamel, which form during childhood, indicate that some individuals spent their early years in regions with different water sources than Erfurt. This provides direct biochemical evidence for the mobility of Jewish families across medieval Europe, supporting documentary evidence of Jewish merchants and scholars traveling along established trade routes between different communities. The ancient DNA preservation quality in the Erfurt samples demonstrates remarkable variation that correlates with age, at death, rather than burial conditions. Younger individuals consistently showed poorer DNA preservation, possibly due to differences in bone density or mineral content during development. This observation has important implications for future ancient DNA studies, suggesting that sampling strategies should account for demographic factors when selecting specimens for analysis. The comparison with other medieval European populations reveals that the Erfurt Jews had significantly higher levels of runs of homozygosity than contemporary non-Jewish populations from Germany, Italy, Hungary, and Denmark. This genetic signature of endogamy was already pronounced in medieval times, indicating that Jewish communities maintained distinct marriage patterns even when living in close proximity to non-Jewish populations. The pattern suggests that religious and cultural boundaries effectively maintain genetic boundaries across generations. The mtDNA diversity patterns within the Erfurt sample show evidence of both founder effects and subsequent population dynamics. Beyond the well-known founder lineages, several individuals carried rare mtDNA variants that are found in modern Ashkenazi populations, but at very low frequencies. These rare lineages provide glimpses into the genetic diversity that was lost during subsequent population bottlenecks and demographic events. The Y chromosome analysis, though limited by coverage, reveals interesting patterns of paternal lineage diversity. The Erfurt males showed a broader range of Y chromosome haplogroups than might be expected from a severely bottlenecked population, suggesting that the male founder population retained more diversity than some previous estimates indicated. This finding has implications for understanding the gender-specific aspects of Ashkenazi Jewish demographic history. The genomic evidence for consanguinity in medieval Ashkenazi communities is surprisingly limited. Despite the small effective population size, the patterns of genome-wide homozygosity suggest that close relative marriages were not common practice. This indicates that even within small communities, marriage partners were typically chosen from beyond the immediate family circle, possibly facilitated by connections between different Jewish settlements.
the ancient pathogen screening, while negative for plague, revealed traces of other microbial DNA that provide insights into the medieval disease environment. The absence of Yersinia pestis is particularly significant given the timing and historical context, suggesting that the 1349 massacre was driven by social and religious persecution rather than disease-related mortality. This finding contributes to broader historical debates about the relationship between epidemic disease and anti-Jewish violence in medieval Europe. The protein preservation analysis in the tooth samples shows that ancient proteins can survive in archaeological specimens for centuries under appropriate conditions. This opens possibilities for future studies to examine ancient protein variants that might not be detectable through DNA analysis alone, potentially providing additional layers of information about medieval health and diet. The statistical methods used to detect population substructure in small ancient samples represent significant methodological advances. The gap statistic analysis and simulation-based approaches for validating clustering results provide robust frameworks for identifying genuine population structure rather than artifacts of low sample sizes or poor DNA preservation. These methods will be valuable for future studies of population structure in archaeological samples. The contamination assessment protocols developed for this study set new standards for validating ancient Jewish DNA. Given the religious and cultural sensitivities surrounding the analysis of Jewish remains, the researchers implemented particularly stringent quality control measures to ensure that the genetic results accurately reflected the medieval individuals, rather than modern contamination. The integration of archaeological, historical and genetic data demonstrates the power of interdisciplinary approaches to understanding past populations. What emerges from this genetic work is far more than a scientific curiosity. It is the story of human persistence encoded in DNA. The Ashkenazi Jewish genome serves as both a testament to the power of endogamy to preserve ancient genetic signatures, and a reminder that our modern understanding of population history continues to evolve, with each new archaeological discovery and technological advancement.